2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC Class First Drive Review, Graceful, Likeable, Classy. It should come as no surprise that the best-selling Mercedes-Benz in the US is the GLC Class. Although the humble crossover isn't a standout in the same way as the ultra-modern EQS or Slinky SL, the German automaker moves more than 50,000 units each year since 2018. And many of those customers are first-timers, meaning they'll become Mercedes zealots if the experience is good or swear off the brand forever if not. Why mess with success, then? With so much riding on its popularity, the redesigned 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 doesn't take too many risks. The second-generation model, third, if you count the boxy GLK, retains a swooping form factor, modernized in detail instead of concept. The cabin's updates are significant, borrowing liberally from the related C-Class sedan. Also important is the revised powertrain, which benefits from standard 48-volt mild hybrid technology for added grunt and efficiency. Will potential and repeat buyers appreciate the updated GLC's minor but comprehensive alterations when it goes on sale this spring? I bet they will. First impressive. Although it appears familiar at first, the 2023 GLC class feels more modern the longer you look at it. Squinting headlights dovetail into the wider grille, and the hood gets a pair of creases intended to recall the legendary 300 SL Gullwing's power bulges. A longer wheelbase and wider track give the 2023 GLC excellent proportions, with a long hood and favorable dash-to-axle ratio that look grander than rivals like the Lexus NX and RX. Clean, unadorned body sides and a slightly pointier daylight opening pair with sharp, triangular taillights and a simple rear bumper. Beyond the modernized overall appearance, there are some great details. Opt for the AMG line styling package and you get a grill texture featuring a galaxy of three-pointed stars, along with painted wheel arch extensions and sportier bumper designs that forego the obviously fake vents of the previous generation, thank goodness. And the new GLC cuts through the sky more cleanly than before, with a 0.29 drag coefficient compared to 0.31. Your pant legs might pay the price however, as the wider, more aerodynamic rocker panels catch both road grime and your calves. Best to just stay inside, then, where the 2023 GLC class makes a positive first impression. There's an appealing bathtub sweep of trim at the base of the windshield that dovetails into the sculpted windowsills, with three squircular vents sitting high above the driver-oriented 11.9-inch touchscreen and two more on the edges of the dash. This design DNA is shared with the C-Class, but unfortunately, so are some obvious cost-cutting choices, hard plastic on and around the door poles and on the forward portion of the door panels, right where your hands and knees are most likely to contact them. At least the center console is nicely padded. Borrowing a note from the S-Class, the GLC offers multicolor ambient lighting that I just can't get enough of, more cascading pinks, blues, and yellows all around, I say. Also adding a bit of class are swaths of French-stitched Ambitex upholstery on the dash and upper doors, which are included in the AMG line pack. The faux leather is also the standard seat upholstery, even on the top-spec pinnacle trim, but Mercedes-Benz knows how to do synthetics so well that it's not bothersome at all. Genuine Napa is available if you want it, but I'm not convinced it's worth $1,450, as my car's Neva Grey Ambitex seats felt supple and sophisticated. Hitting the curve. The 2023 GLC has only been announced in base 300 form so far, receiving the same mild hybrid, turbocharged 2.0 liter inline 4 as the C300 sedan. With 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque, the 2023 represents 22 extra torques over the outgoing model, with an integrated starter generator adding 23 horsepower and 148 lbft in low load situations to compensate for what little turbo lag the engine has. As a result, the GLC 300 never feels flat footed or taken by surprise when passing or merging, with one unfortunate exception. Theoretically, the 48 volt electrics are supposed to get the car moving from a standstill while the engine wakes up from its automatic idle stop, but in practice, it's way too easy to catch the GLC by surprise. Even when driving away gently, the turbo fur always feels like it's rushing to catch up with your inputs, tossing your passengers into their head restraints and forcing you to apologize to your mother-in-law for spilling her coffee. 
That's really the GLC's only major accelerative downfall, because both the torque-rich engine and Gentile 9-speed automatic transmission play well together once up to speed. The GLC 300 isn't much of a thriller when the road gets twisty, but like any modern Mercedes-Benz, it handles with competence. My tester was rear-wheel drive, and it drove like it, with more accurate steering and a lighter feel than I was expecting. But the default behavior when pushing hard is safe, predictable understeer, with nary a whisper of the front tire's intentions through the helm. The non-adaptive suspension is tuned toward body control and away from slushiness, which helps improve driver confidence when you want to have fun, but overall, the GLC is a sedate offering, not a sporty one. Gotta leave some room for AMG improvement. A silicon fist in a silken glove. The benefit of somewhat aloof driving dynamics is a freeway ride that's smooth and serene over most surfaces, and the GLC does a good job of managing road and wind noise. There isn't even much tire slap going over expansion joints, of which we have a zillion in Los Angeles, and I was very impressed with the Mercedes composure. If I had a complaint, it would be the guttural noises coming from under the hood in hard acceleration, but they quiet down nicely when cruising. If you truly can't abide the noise, a customizable engine note artificially augments some of the more agricultural engine sounds with a sassy little snarl. Adding to the class competitive level of comfort and isolation is one of the industry's best active safety suites, but as we've come to expect of German automakers, much of the tech is optional. Automatic emergency braking, forward collision warning, and blind spot monitoring come standard, but unfortunately, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, and automatic lane change assistance are relegated to a $1,950 package. So equipped, my tester handled stop-and-go traffic very naturally, compensating for other vehicles encroaching on my lane by slowing a bit and giving a bit more lateral room where appropriate. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.